Davis came off the bench for the Owls to score his career high and scored 36 points. In fact, he scored the last 10 of the game for FAU as the Owls held off UAB 88 to 86. As we look at the starting lineups here, no Jordan Jelly Walker in the lineup for UAB, but he is in uniform and he is on the bench. So we'll have to wait and see how this lineup for UAB will fare against a very tough, very deep FAU team. As we'll take a look there, there is Walker. He was in warm-ups today. And you go back to the game on the 21st against North Texas. He was expected to go in. He said he was feeling good. And it was about 12 minutes before tip-off before he decided, no, coach, I could, I can't go. So they've been waiting and, uh, in anticipation for his comeback. And ho hopefully tonight it is because the, the Blazers certainly need him. There is Coach uh, Kennedy here for the UAB Blazers, his third year. Longtime coach over at Ole Miss. 64 wins and again led him to the NCAA tournament last season as the tournament champions at a conference usa for losing to houston in the opening round of the tournament as we take a look at dusty may the indiana alum started his coaching career as a student manager for bob knight 87 wins and again has his fau owls get the longest winning streak in the country now mike o'donnell both these teams have a lot going for them. Both these teams can certainly win CUSA when this is all over. What are your keys to getting a win tonight? For FAU, it's all about transition defense. UAB has the 30th fastest tempo in the country. You've got to have great team box outs. UAB is the bigger, more athletic team for UAB. No easy threes. It's a top 30 three-point shooting team in the country for FIU. And you keep feeding the big fella, Trey Jemison. Let the offense go inside first before you take it outside. That's worked the last few games offensively for the Blazers. Andy Kennedy was very candid with us talking about his team. He said, you know, we have a lot of those pieces that made the tournament last year, but they added seven transfers this year. So a lot of new pieces, and they're still trying to make some of those team pieces fit. It's also hard to make those pieces fit when your best player, who's also a top three scorer in the country, is unsure if he's going to play in the really game in and game out the last five games. Everything depends, their offense, everything depends on if Jordan Walker plays or not. Well, Walker has his shooting top off, and he's the first blazer on the bench next to the coaching staff as we are underway here from Birmingham. Blazers, the CUSA Tournament Champions last year. FAU riding the longest winning streak of the country at 20 in a row. It is K.J. Buffin with the basketball up top, getting into Eric Gaines. You'll see a lot of switching on defense for FAU. They are a heavy scatter report defensive team. Good dig there. Five on the shot clock here. Brewer going baseline, has to hurry. 18-footer off the side of the backboard. It's going to be a shot clock violation here. Good defense in the early going here for the Owls. They're 38th in the country in scoring defense. FAU is only giving up 33 points a game. And mind you, they're playing a team in, F in UAB. They want to get up and go. They want to score over 80. They average 83 a game, which is good for top 20 in the country. Going by the metrics here, they're the only team in the country in both the top 30 on offense and defensive efficiency as we see a three from the outside there. Missed there from the Owls. Here come the Blazers. Brewer for three. Got him in short. And here come the Owls. This is Nick Boyd, which may call him one of the vocal leaders of this team. They work it into Golden. Reverse layup attempt, and that one is blocked. Good defense there from the Blazers. That's what size and athleticism will do. You lose the cutter on the baseline, but you're able to recover quickly. Gaines on the drive. We got a whistle on the foul going up. Eric Gaines has free throws. This is part of the UAB offense that's so good. And it may sound very cliche, but they do a terrific job of getting to the free throw line. They are third in the nation in free throw attempts. They shoot 25 free throws a game. And they're fourth in the country in free throws made per game. They make at least 18 of those. And why that's so important is aside from the fact that I've always felt that free throws act as many timeouts. UAB wants to get up and run, and there's no better time to set up your press than after a made free throw. As you see coach Andy Kennedy there. Free throw. And here's the press. Blocked. 
Boyd with a little bit of trouble bringing it up the floor. Finally does. Works it up high here to Golden. Nice pass inside to Boyd. Kick it back out. Good ball movement. Right side jumper for three is off the mark. There from Greenlee. Offensive rebound here for FAU. It's amazing when you take good shots, you usually get extra possessions. Put yourself in position to get offensive rebounds. Here's Boyd on the drive and scores. He what? impacts winning in so many different ways. That's Nicholas Boyd for FAU. He doesn't have to score, but right place at the right time. He's always got his head on a swivel. Boyd, the redshirt freshman, didn't play at all last year. Had a knee injury back and performing well for this team, averaging nearly 10 points a game. So we see a nice shot there from inside the circles. Eric Gaines buries it. The LSU transfer making an impact here for UAB now. Oh, he got him on the floor. Put him on the deck. Kick it back outside. Greenlee working in the circle. Nearly has it stripped, but gets it back. Boy, six on the shot clock. Left side, three-pointer, off the mark. Rebound, almost grabbed by Brewer, and went undercut, and the foul is called as Jordan Jelly Walker is at the scorer's table, ready to check in. Again, he's missed the last five games with a foot injury. Walker actually hurt in the game against Western Kentucky, but did finish that game. And you can see the offense for UAB, and listen to the ovation here for Jelly Walker returning to the Blazers. Standing ovation for Jordan Walker returning from a lower leg injury. Before he got hurt, he was on the Wooden Award watch list. If you haven't seen him play, he simply is one of the most electrifying scorers in college basketball. Big part of this team that made the NCAA tournament last year. Such a fun player to watch. They're glad to have him back in the lineup. Nearly got away with the travel there. The Golden got his own rebound, goes up with it, and draws the foul. Fans here at Barto Arena didn't like it. But free throw's coming up here for Now, one Dallas. thing to watch for for UAB with Jordan Walker in the game. Remember, UAB had to adjust their offense and defense when he was out. So Jordan Walker into the game now. He wants to run, play fast, up-tempo, shoot threes and transition. But will he have the conditioning to do that? He's been out for multiple weeks. And right in the middle of the season, if a player, especially a guard like Walker, when you're out for multiple weeks, you're going to have to go hard for two or three minutes. And don't be surprised if we don't see him for two or three minutes after Andy Kennedy looks for more rotational opportunities to get Walker in and out. Golden with the first free throw. He's second in conference USA. Fouls drawn for 48 minutes at six. He's very good at getting to the free throw line. He's puts that one up and in, and we're all knotted up at four. About three minutes gone by here in Birmingham. Gaines, long threes, short. Goes out of play and it goes back to FAU. Walker did not touch the ball on that possession. How does the offense change for the Blazers now that they haven't had him for five games? They've started to figure things out. They had a great game against Rice the last time out. But now they've got the one of the leading scorers in the country back in their lineup. Well, you can go faster. And don't be surprised if Trey Jemison gets more look on the inside because Jordan Walker has so much gravity that the help defense is going to shift to him always. Nice pass inside to Golden. It was tipped, but it still ended up in Golden's hands. And now FAU on top by two. What a game these two teams had down in Boca back in January. Came down to the wire. Blazers had a lead there late to work it inside. It's Jemison back out. Gaines for three. Got it. Eric Gaines from downtown. He's been busy so far in this first half. Seven points for the Blazers, and they all belong to Gaines. We're going to drive to the bucket. Wow, what a play. The Hezzy. Getting downhill from Boyd, that was smooth. Just pause enough to have the defense stand up, and then explode again. Tough move and drive by Boyd. Here's Walker. Thought about it. Now takes the three with 12 on the shot clock. That's off the heel. Owls will bring it up. Three by one. Taking it downhill is Boyd. Knocked out of his hands out of play. And we'll stay with the Owls as we step aside. Back and forth we go. 
And we got Jordan Walker back. Oklahoma, and then look what they did in revenge against Vanderbilt. My <laughs> goodness, Purdue has a big test on Saturday at number 21, Indiana. Big Ten basketball is the real deal, Alex Del Barrio. Well, this year, Conference USA has certainly been the real deal. A, a much deeper conference than it's been in the last four or five years. FAU, a big part of that. Really, it's the best Conference USA has been in a decade. They had the best non-conference winning percentage in over 10 years. Janelle Davis with the layup there, coming off the bench and already contributing. FAU now four of six on shots they've taken from two-point range. Watch FAU go to the double. As soon as he gets into the paint, good hands. Dennison has some trouble with it. And on the follow coming back up, Tony Tony. Tony Tony is one of my favorite UAB Blazers. He is unselfish, part of a lion, plays unbelievably hard and absurdly athletic. Saw that athleticism right there. Three-pointer right corner, got it. Nick Boyd from downtown. First three of the game there for FAU. It's really been two players contributing so far. It's Boyd for FAU and Gaines for UAB. Three-pointer left corner off the mark and the rebound hauled in by Michael Forrest. So that's Florida Atlantic basketball. Who's ever is hot, they go. They keep Feeding that hot player, no matter who it is. Oh my, what a tough shot there from Elijah Martin, the sophomore. All conference third team last year for this FAU team, and now they've got on a 10 to 2 run and lead it by six. Good switch out there on Jelly Walker, and they switch again. Walker's going to see multiple defenders tonight. Walker floats one up and was looking for the alley oop, coming down with it. Putting it up, putting it in, and drawing the foul there, K.J. Buffin. For a player like Jordan Walker, the best way to get yourself into the game is defensively and getting your teammates involved. He snakes the ball screen and then draws an additional defender for the lob. Those are the kind of plays you love to see if you're Andy Kennedy coming from Jordan Walker. Giancarlo Rosado picks up the foul there for FAU, sending Buffin to the foul line. And, you know, Coach Kennedy was talking to us before the game about how Buffin, best defensive IQ on the floor for them, calls him the X factor for their team. Well, in their last two conference wins, he's averaged 15 a game. In his last two conference losses, he's only averaged five. I would say KJ Buffin is incredibly important to this Blazers team. First miss and six tries there for the Owls. As Janelle Davis couldn't connect on the layup. He wanted a foul, didn't get it. Here's Jelly Walker. Bounce pass, baseline drive, looking for the dunk. Couldn't get it. Davis with the rebound. He goes up with it. He's stripped. Fans wanted a foul. Greenlee working inside. Kick it out. Nearly taken away there from Walker. It'll stay on this end of the floor with the Owls. This is Jordan Walker again. Watch his hesitation, draws two defenders. You lose track of your guy. Another great pass from Jordan Walker. UAB doesn't finish it, but I'm okay with that offensive possession of Amanda Kennedy. Can we talk about what a tough pass that was for Walker yeah. to make? The angle he was at splitting two defenders to get it to the baseline. Well, everybody talks about his scoring, but he averages over four assists a game as well. He's got terrific vision. Janelle Davis launches the three in and out, buffing with the board. Got a little bounce. You know he wants to pull here. Walker. Right side. Now it's Tony. He'll pull up from 15. Miss short. Offensive rebound. And he put it up and in. Javion Davis kept the basket and the foul. Andy Kennedy has been waiting for this kind of energy from Javion Davis. The Mississippi State transfer. Tony Tony takes a contested mid-range jumper. Not the shot that UAB likes to take, but that's Davis just playing meaner and angry around the rim. That's Tough finish. It's two fouls now for Giancarlo Rosado, so he'll head to the bench now for the uh, Owls. 
Davis, the transfer from Mississippi State, also spent time in Alabama. Big play underneath. Blazers now on a 6-0 run. Now we've got a takeaway, potentially. A foul is called, and it's going to be against FAU's coming the Blazers' way. That's the kind of defense that UAB wants to do. Deflections, steals, cause havoc because they want to get out and run a transition. They want threes and dunks after steals. That's why they have the 30th fastest tempo in the nation per Ken Palm. It's just the first turnover there for the Owls. So we're getting close to eight, eight minutes gone by. That's one where Greenlee was a little too aggressive. You want to slow that down. You thought you saw something. If you don't have it, dribble yourself out of it or pick it up. There's Walker for the three. High bounce off the back iron. Golden comes up with the rebound. Back come the outs. Greenlee finds a seam, works it inside. High off by the window, gets a little friendly bounce. A little shooter's touch after that high shot off the glass. Greenlee absorbs the contact. These guards for FAU are strong, and they have low bases. That's great help by Golden. At number 50 for FAU. Pulls his hedge over for Walker. This is UAB on the road. Potential for three quad one wins leading into the rest of the season. I mean, this resume doesn't just scream of Cinderella. They're going to be a single digit seed if they continue on winning like this in the NCAA tournament. Just an incredible job that Dusty May has done. As you see them working inside. We got a foul drawn here. Free throws coming up, and, and Mike Davis even said so much to this team. You know, the Detroit Mercy coach, who was at Texas Southern, of course, Indiana coach as well. The ties there between Dusty May and Mike Davis. He, he spoke to their team after their matchup earlier in the season and said, "You're there's usually only five real teams a year. He said, you are one of those teams. Talking about how close of a unit they are, how in sync they are as a unit. He says, you have the potential to make a deep tournament run and that's when that belief started. And granted, it was early in the season, only five games in, but after that, they've been rattling off win after win after win. You have to wonder if that belief in themselves that they could make a deep run has to be impacting what they've been doing. First of all, I think Mike Davis should play the Powerball after that <laughs> kind of uh, preparation, you know. But it, it, Coach May told us, he said he looked at our guys, and that's when he said, our guys looked at each other like, wow, a deep run the tournament that early. And little, they've started playing more with a confident chip on their shoulder. And on the other end, Taven Loven putting it up and in here. And he's banged up after putting that one in, drawing the foul. Elijah Martin called for it. A great inside-out crossover from Taven Loven. Just takes a shot from Martin and Golden, also hits the floor really hard. David Lovins had quite the journey at UAB. 20, 2020 and 21, he was second team All-Conference USA. It's his fifth season at UAB. He's their all-time leader in games played with over, and over 1,300 career points. Incredible career as a UAB Blazer for David Lovins. Yeah, he's 14th in Blazer history in scoring with his 1,372 points coming into the game. This is a kick ball here. So Coach Dusty May of FAU told us, this is the thing we have to be ready for, is their constant switching defenses. For UAB, we've seen man-to-man, -man, we've seen full court man-to-man, -man, and now we have a 1-3-1 zone for the Blazers. This is my favorite defense that UAB plays in because of how long and extended they can get and push you away from the paint. This is David. They switch to a man. This is why it's it's hard to go. It's hard to score against. Forrest. Three point attempt, top of the key, off the heel, tapped out of play. It's going back to the Blazers. Gaffney with the miss. Is this the type of game you expected so far? Oh, absolutely. One point game in Conference USA between the team that was supposed to win it this year in Conference USA versus what a lot of people thought, I think FAU is going to be a sleeper team in Conference USA. Well, 19th in the country, the Owls are getting it done. 
This is Brewer. Tried to get the bounce pass to Walker. Wasn't ready for it. Had to go retrieve it. And does a nice job of keeping it in. Six on the shot clock, though. Blazers got a hurry. Nearly stripped out of there. Brewer just throws one up. Almost got it to go. Comes up empty and Golden with the rebound. Jarnell Davis gets a lot of credit for that. Going in with two hands to rip that ball away and cause distraction. Three point off the mark there from Martin. And back come the Blazers. Jelly Walker back for the first time in five games. It stepped out of play. He's looking to pass it down low into Davis one more time. Walker so far 0 for 2 in the game. Did not start. Now he's coming off the bench. And Coach Kennedy said if he did play tonight, it was going to be a feel thing on how many minutes and whether or not he was going to be tired or not. Because he's a guy that's used to playing a ton of minutes, but when he hasn't played in five games. He hasn't really gone up and down the floor is what he said. Even though he's been practicing in terms of going up and down the floor repetitively like you would in the game as we get another foul drawn. They do this better than just about any team in the country. But going back to Walker, it's going to be a feel thing to see how conditioned he is for the rest of this game. And he's not going to be 100% in shape right now. That's not a knock on Jordan Walker. It's just no player that comes back from out being out multiple weeks is just ready to go on day one on the first game back it takes time to get yourself back into a rhythm of a game but he's always in shape coach kenny has said he's the hardest worker on our team so when your best scorer and best player is the hardest worker on your team you're going to learn how to play within yourself and play within the confines of the game in your first game back he'll get it back it just takes a little time Jemison comes up empty. First free throw miss of the game for the Blazers in their sixth attempt. He was out on the court shooting before, even before FAU shoot around this morning in anticipation of this game. He was here for your shoot around this morning. That's right. That's, yeah. that's right. It, it, a guy like Jelly Walker, he's a, you know, uh, what you call a gym rat. You know, he knows. The first and last names of every single janitor that works at Bartow Arena, you have to. You know, those have got to be your best friends. If you're a shooter and a scorer, you're trying to get shots up all the time. One point lead here for the Owls. This is Boyd. Working inside. That one is blocked, rejected out of play. It'll stay with the Owls with 10 on the shot clock as we look back to pre pre shoot around here there is jordan jelly walker getting some work in getting some shots up this is where we all started to think maybe he will indeed play and we were saying as we get a turnover here back come the blazers on offense throws it up off the window with the miss another miss down low there from jemison and a foul is drawn and more free throws coming up here for the Blazers. Jemison took a shot in his right hand and ran over to the sideline. He was shaking his right hand in a lot of pain. I mean, Jemison is a, that's a grown man. There is no way I'm taking a charge on Trey Jemison. He's every bit of the 6'11", 260 from right here in Birmingham. Comes and transfer. They're all knotted up at 19. Take another look. This clearly just looks like foul on the wrist hand area. That doesn't seem to bother Jemison too much. Good from the free throw, UAB. Back in front. There's that extended 1 3 1 zone. Look at Jemison's above the three point line at 6 foot 11. FAU hadn't scored in the last two and a half minutes. It's back to man. Good help by Jemison on Davis on that DHO. Davis working back to the corner, launches a follow away three, misses short, ball tapped out into the hands of Weatherspoon. Fresh 20 here for the Owls. Weatherspoon, southpaw, takes the three. That one rims out. FAU now 0 for their last five from the field. Gaines, one handed pass to the corner. Tony, Tony. Out to Buffett. Coach Kennedy calls him the X Factor. To Gaines, launches a three. That goes in and out. Tony with the rebound. Puts it up. Tilt the basket and the foul. Tony, Tony with a nice follow in the finish. And he can complete a three point play coming up.
can you impact winning without being a major scoring threat? And that's exactly the kind of player that Tony Tony is for UAB. Comes from the weak side, no box outs for FAU. We told you that we should be a point of emphasis in the keys to the game of boxing out as a team because of the high-flying, energetic athletes of UAB's wings. This 1-3-1 zone, it, it, it's bothering FAU. By the way, that was their fourth converted three-point play of the first half for UAB. Talk about them drawing fouls. They've done it efficiently as Boyd silences this Bartow Arena crowd with a deep three. Boyd has been the guy for FAU. He's That's already his second three of the game. Ten points for Boyd. Already in double figures, four of five from the field. They are only two of ten from downtown, though, FAU. They're not going to stop shooting threes. They took 38 shots from the three-point line in their last game. Speaking of threes, Buffin takes in that one. What does our friend Ian Eagle like to say? Wedgie. Yeah. We've got a tight one. Huge postseason implications here in Birmingham. We got a one-point game. We got free throws coming up here for UAB in what is a one-point game. 22% of UAB's points on the season have been made at the free throw line. That's an incredible number. Uh, third in the nation in free throw attempts. They attempt 25 free throws a game. Enables them to set up their press whenever they want to. So now it's over 30% of their points tonight. That is their 10th made free throw already. They are 10 of 12 from the free throw line tonight by the Blazers. Good help by Trey Jemison and getting back to his guy. That was a masterful job in pick and roll hedge defense. Oh! Martin, taking it to the rim. That one pops up in the air and the rebound comes all the way out near half court and a foul committed by the Blazers on the, on the loose ball. Let's take one more look at this one as Eric Gaines picks up his second foul. This is Elijah Martin that almost obliterates the rim on this drive. <laughs> oh my goodness. You could make a case that that should have been a foul on Jemison. Absolutely. Nevertheless, it stays on the Owls into the floor with that dunk miss. They're just one of their last seven from the field. Owls trailing the Blazers here by three. Working inside. This time they got a finish from the dunk from Vlad Golden. Can't relax on sideline out of bounds play for FAU. They're seventh in the nation in scoring efficiency off of sideline out of bounds. They have almost a 50% chance of scoring. Most teams just try to get it in bounds off the side. FAU's looking to attack. Walker around the screen. Now taking his baseline. Finds the cutter. Off balance shot. What an attempt there from Loven. Here come the Owls. Weatherspoon, the southpaw, the three, short that time. Tony Tony with the rebound. Quick in transition, Buffin down the center of the lane, has it knocked out of his hands, but a foul is called. More free throws here for the Blazers. Back-to-back -back great passes from Jordan Walker. We're going back to how efficient sideline out of bounds is for FAU. There's Boyd again, that slight hesitation, and then the dump down to Golden, who's one of the best finishers in Conference USA. That hesitation from Boyd is so tough. I love players that can change speed, but in order to change speed, you have to be able to decelerate really well. I love Boyd's ability to decelerate, especially in the paint area. Everything is a great scorer or guard. You want to cause indecision against the guy guarding you because an indecisive athlete is a non-athlete in basketball. Buffin connects from the foul line. Buffin's got five. UAB is 12 of 14 from the free throw line here in this first half. They've attempted 14. FAU's only attempted four from the free throw line. There's oh. Tony Tony again. Another deflection. He's been everywhere tonight. Nearly committed a foul there. This is Golden. Nice head fake. Takes it to the rim. Another jam there from Vlad Golden. What a finish. He called him one of the best finishers in Conference USA. How about that ball fake to get it to the rim? More ball fakes, kids. More ball fakes. Defenders hate playing against 
players that ball fake constantly. What a pass! What a pass! Went How right, did he see Trey Jemison? Went right past the left ear of Golden into the hands of Jemison, and he finishes hard. He says, anything you can do, I can do better. Greenlee lost his defender, thought about the three. Should have taken it. He was open. Golden on the block, trying to go baseline, found just a seam of room, and still able to put it up and in off of the window. Golden shoots 63% from the field. He's crazy efficient inside of eight feet of the rim. He's in double figures now with 10 after that layup. He's four of five from the field. Good switch out by Martin on to Jordan Walker. FAU prep for that and scatter report. Offensive foul on Jemison. Now, I don't know how Walker saw Jemison because he's getting essentially double teamed by such an aggressive hedge from Golden. This is ridiculous. What Absolutely that, ridiculous. What do you think? That, what do you think that sounded like as it whizzed past the left <laughs> ear of oh, man. Golden? Wow. It sounded like, I, oh, I might be going to the bench here. <laughs> as a defender, that's the that's something you never want to hear is the ball sail right past your head. Absolutely terrifying. So there's some sort of discussion going on here. This game so far has been terrific. Back and forth, we've seen everything tonight from passes from Jordan Walker to FAU's efficient offense. This has been awesome. And it's a lot like the game they had down in Boca. Yeah. Drive to the bucket. Miss on the layup attempt by Greenlee. Rebound by Davis. That was designed ISO downhill drive for Greenlee. But Walker, good defense. Walker drawing the foul. Brennan Laurent, freshman on this FAU team, draws the foul, or commits the foul. So Walker hasn't scored yet. This is the best way for a scorer to get back into the rhythm on the offensive end. He's been a distributor tonight, and an exceptional one at that. But you just sometimes need to see the ball go in. And it helps the fact that he's an 86% free throw shooter. There it is. First point since that game against Western Kentucky in which he picked up the injury. That was back on January 11th. Since then, he missed the games at La Tech, at Middle Tennessee. They thought they might have him for the game against North Texas. And about 10 minutes before the game, he said, Coach, I can't go. But he appears to be moving just fine tonight. Now it's about getting him back into condition. So now we got a 2-3 zone. They were in a three-quarter court press, and UAB's now in a 2-3 zone. Then they go to man-to-man. -man. Laurent working in the post, zero on zero, and now a foul on Davis underneath. So FAU trying to give UAB a little taste to their own medicine. And UAB has to be locked in on baseline out of bounds. We talked about how efficient they were on sideline out of bounds. Ford Atlantic is 21st in the nation in scoring efficiency off of baseline out of bounds. They have a 60% effective field goal percentage on BOB plays. Ty Brewer coming into the game here for UAB. They try to inbound. They're going to have to inbound it into the backcourt. Going to retrieve it there is Nick Boyd. We approach the four-minute mark. Janelle Davis, doubled. Pass to Boyd, takes the three, misses short. Davis has it for the Blazers. Jelly Walker. Here comes the double. The double comes on him quickly and up high. Work it down low, and another finish there from Davis. Three and a half to go, first half. UAB trying to keep the momentum. They'll slow things down. Here's Walker. Pulls up. In and out. Couldn't finish. 
Boy, the roof would have blown off the Bartow Center if he hit his first three. Davis misses short. A little floater on the baseline. Three minutes to go. Walker, this time, tries to take it to the rim. A little dump off, but a foul on FAU. Hasn't been scoring for Jordan Walker. It's been passing. The patience in the double team. The absolute dime to his teammate. He's got UAB up. Stay with us. Thirty-three twenty-eight. our score here in Birmingham. Under three minutes to go, first half. And what a game we've had. We knew, we knew a couple of weeks ago. I, I don't know about you, but I have all my games on a calendar, just on a regular calendar. I put a red circle around this one, how excited I was. One, because I was going to be working, a, working the game with, you know, the Jedi of the Telestrator, Mike O'Donnell over here. But... Also because we're going to get a, a team with a heck of a win streak and a tournament team from last year in UAB. Well, that's very kind by you. I mean, this is one of the best games in college basketball tonight, period. It's a top 25 team versus a UAB team in which they have a top three score in the country in Jordan Walker. A lot of national media members thought that UAB would be a fringe top 25 team on their own. Jordan Walker gets hurt. Things start to go downhill a little bit. They had to adjust the way they were playing offensively and defensively. Now Walker is back. And they were on the precipice of, of being one of those teams. They were 7-1 and one to start the season. And that great win over Georgia in the Sunshine Slam in Daytona Beach. By the way, how good of a job is Mike White doing at Georgia? Fantastic. Mike White, someone that Dusty May relies on when it comes to advice. We've got four on the shot clock here. Reverse layup attempt. Off the mark there from Martin. They've had a tough time getting him going in this game. UAB with a six-point lead. Nice pass down into Davis, but he couldn't hang on to it. Golden got tied up. Ended up down on the deck here on the other side. It's Davis for three. Misses short. Three-point shooting not going well at all for FAU. They're now just two of 13 from downtown. As for Jelly Walker, he comes on Bepti. Offensive rebound, Brewer. He can't finish. Almost another one. Ball taps all the way out to half court. They say deflection. So it comes back out to UAB. Three-point attempt. Right wing is good. Ladarius Brewer from downtown. Dusty May says timeout. I want to talk it over. They're on their feet here at Buck. Winning without scoring the ball. And that's exactly what Jordan Walker is doing. He's also doing it on the defensive end as well. He's got four assists tonight, but defensively, I thought he's been flying around in the half court, causing havoc. Al struggling to find some offense. Janel Davis draws the foul here, going baseline. What is not working offensively right now for FAU? I think it's more about UAB's disruptive defense and the, uh, the amount of different defensive styles that we have seen from UAB. We've seen the press, the three-quarter court, the 1-3-1, one, one, the man-to-man, -man, and it's really kind of thrown FAU out of sync. I mean, some of their best offenses come from sideline out of bounds and baseline out of bounds, if not in transition. Well, well let's talk about what UAB's done recently defensively. But let's just go back to the game on Saturday against Rice. Rice is one of the best scoring teams in the country. They held him to just 52 points, and they only got to 50 because they hit a three at the buzzer. But Rice was averaging 79 points going into that game, and UAB, like you said, held him to just 52 Coach Kennedy said he, he really felt that they reset their defensive foundation of who they are and who they need to be. I mean, it's it's really no secret. Jelly Walker from downtown, his first made field goal. And Bartow erupted after that make there from Walker. The lead is 10 now for the Blazers. Davis. Smart. Misses in and out. Could not finish there. And a foul called against the Owls. This is what terrorizes you in scatter report situations. And it's scary because you can't prepare for this. This is a little hezzy, and he's one of the best three-point shooters in the country off the bounce. What I mean by off the bounce is this players that can dribble into their three-point shot it's hard to do. It's not practiced very often. Your energy transfer has to be pure off the bounce. Davis. 
Up top, three-point attempt. Got it. Ty Brewer from downtown. The lead is 13. UAB starting to cruise at the end of this first half. 6-0 run. Three-point attempt, left corner, in and out. Tip in, no. Ball bounces around, wrestled away. Brewer's got it. About 20 seconds to go. Ten seconds. Walker. Working. Pulls up for three. Misses short. Last chance here for the Owls. It's Davis going to let one fly from half court. And missed it short. The Owls have won 20 games. The Owls here in the second half. The Owls certainly trailed at the half before against North Texas. They trailed at the half 32 to 27. Ended up winning that game 66 to 62. And Ole Miss, they, they trailed against that uh, Ole Miss, uh, their only loss on their resume early in November. Uh, nice Hi. slip by Golden. Golden, nobody there. Able to dunk it in. I was first thing I was going to ask you: What did FAU talk about in the locker room in terms of making adjustments? They're a good bench scoring team. They only had eight bench points in that first half. I don't think there's much conversation regarding the offense. I think they're more upset that they gave up 43 points in the first half. Baseline jumper there from Jemison comes up empty. But if you know Dusty May and this Florida Atlantic team, he probably has his first four plays scripted in the half court, ready to go. Fans wanted to travel on Golden. I didn't think it was. Here's a little floater, nice little teardrop shot there from Brian Greenlee, and already Florida Atlantic out of the gate, getting some offense early. Yeah, if you thought Florida Atlantic was going to be out of this game, it, you don't know this team. This is not a Cinderella team. This is not a fluke team. You think they're going to go quietly into the night? They will rage on. And we talked about in the open. This is one of the deepest teams. Not in CUSA. Of course, that's obvious. They're one of the deepest teams in the country with how many guys Coach May plays and is comfortable. And even Coach Kennedy said this about this Florida Atlantic team. Just about any guy in that starting lineup, and including two or three guys on the bench, can lead them in scoring on any given night. Their best three-point shooter is the second or third guy off the bench. That's Michael Forst. Three-pointer in the corner. Missed by Walker. Now here come the outs. This is Boyd. Foul drawn here, and now it's UAB with the struggles here early. Gaines picking up the foul, that's his third. Greenlee. Started tough there by Walker, has to save it, and FAU turns it over. Jelly. Pass into Davis. Walker back and forth with Davis and get caught up underneath. We get a whistle. Officials have to get him to stop, and then we do get a foul. It's going to be against FAU. It's going to be Weatherspoon. So hard to guard Jordan Walker in the open floor. He's going to change his speed. And he's got 100 miles an hour, and he's got 50 miles an hour in his bag. And you just never know when he's going to explode. Good no call by the referees there. AG Buffett. Great no call. Might have thrown a little bit of a shoulder, but like you said, Mike, good no call. And then on the other end, burying the triple there is Nick Boyd. He had a good start to that first half and then kind of cooled off a little bit or at least didn't get as many opportunities to get a shot up. But now he's got 13 to lead the way for FAU. It's his third three tonight. Davis misses short. Golden with a rebound. Quickly out to Greenlee. Greenlee trying to find some room when we get a foul called. It'll be FAU ball in the baseline. Foul's going to be against Jelly Walker. You could tell that Greenlee wanted that matchup in transition against Jordan Walker. The opportunity to get Walker in foul trouble in transition. Smart, a high IQ play by Greenlee trying to attack Walker there.
Dump off. Golden throws it up. And foul called against UAB. They're right off of the baseline out of bounds play. They immediately go into an open pick and roll in the middle, th middle third of the court. Golden twice in the first half was the recipient of two really good pick and roll passes in that middle third of the court. First free throw attempts of the second half for FAU. They only had six in that first half compared to 18 for the Blazers. Golden comes up empty. This is the next evolution of Golden's game. He only shoots 57% from the line. He plays so hard, he catches everything that he's always getting fouled. If he's somewhere over 70%, he's probably averaging 14, 15 points a game. See the discrepancy there in the free throws attempted. FAU 7 of 8, the UAB 15 of 18. Runner by Brewer missed. Golden here, altered that shot. Here come the Owls. Nice hezzy dribble. Reverse layup. Good. Great play there from Jalen Gaffney. The UConn transfer. Played in every UConn game for three seasons. And we got a timeout taken by the Blazers. Played better defense in the second half. They were able to go on that run. Haven't missed a shot so far in the first half. Cut this deficit to five points. We got another really tight ball game. Dusty May was telling us this, this team isn't afraid of anything. They're, they're, whenever they've been down, they've been able to chip away at leads, and that's exactly what's happening here. They were down by 13. Deficit is down to five here. And you even said we were kind of talking about the way this game could potentially go and the broadcast, how it can go. We, we always talk about scenarios during halftime. And we were both like, this game is going to get close again because this oh, is yeah. FAU. Oh, yeah, this is Ford Atlantic. They are one of the best teams in the country at making adjustments, not just after timeouts, but after halftime as well. Five-point game. Greenlee takes it to the rim, off the window when he scores. And we've got a one-possession game here. Owls outscoring the Blazers 12-2 here in the second half. Buffett works inside. We're going to whistle and a jump ball on the block here. Possession arrow is going to keep it with the Blazers. That was terrific help by Vlad Gold of FAU walling up without fouling because Buffett wanted the mismatch. He wanted the mismatch on Greenlee going downhill. Seven on the shot clock here. Drive it to the rim. Golden commits the foul and Gaines puts it up and in. Score it and one. Eric Gaines has a knack for making difficult shots look routine. That is an unbelievably difficult shot, fading to your left as a right-handed player, going out of bounds against a seven-footer. Second foul on Golden. Now in the first half, the Blazers had four successfully converted three-point plays. This will be their fifth opportunity at the traditional three-point play as Gaines goes to the line. And you could hear me talk in this entire Bartow arena. They got that quiet in the building. Well, they know how important free throws are to this team. One of the best teams in the country at getting to the line. We've got a six-point game here at Bartow. FAU's won 20 in a row. They're the 19th-ranked team in the country. UAB, UAB, the tournament team for Conference USA last season. Greenlee stopped his dribble. Six on the shot clock here. Back out. Three-point attempt. One second on the shot clock. That one's missed. And UAB has it. We got a whistle. And on that step back from Greenlee, he clearly has a lower leg injury. He, he pulled up quickly. Certainly hope he's okay, but... 15.38 to go is... Take a look one more time as Greenlee going up. Well, hope, hope he's okay moving back. Interesting peak. FAU trying to hang on to a 20 game win streak, the longest in the country. Alex Obario, Mike O'Donnell, our entire CBS crew.
glad to have you here and for what has been coming into this game Mike one of the highly most highly anticipated matchups in Conference USA in the regular season in a long time that certainly lived up to it this is the place to be right now on CBS Sports Network off the mark on that attempt there from KJ Buffett back the other way is FAU Martin can't finish well he struggled tonight hasn't he just four points He's now one of six from the field but you don't really worry if you're Florida Atlantic and a guy like Martin is struggling because there's so many other guys that step up you're never worried or relying just on one guy to get you points Taven Lowland gets the lead back up to eight for the Blazers there's that extended 1-3-1 zone defense that really bothered Ford Atlantic in the first half. Wow! Just plucking it out of thin air was Eric Gaines. Now takes it the other way, goes coast to coast for the layup. 7-0 run here for the Blazers, and here comes the pressure again. Giancarlo Rosado who got in a bit of foul trouble in that first half for the Owls. Picks up the bucket there, his first. And we got another offensive foul called against UAB. Talked about defense turning into offense before. Take a look at this play. The UAB is the 12th most efficient trans off transition offensive team in the nation. First Synergy Sports, because of plays like that, they do a great job of taking defensive steals and pushing it in transition for easy buckets. Eric Gaines, big time play. I don't, I don't even know if that replay just showed you how remarkable a defensive play that was. Full extension, bringing it in and taking it the other that. way. Wow, what a shot there from Michael Forrest. Michael Forrest is now 1-3 away from the all-time Florida Atlantic three-point record after that make. That puts him over 1,500 points scoring in his FAU career. Shot inside, UAB responding after every FAU punch we've seen in the second half now. There's Michael Forrest coming off the DHO, ripping a three, one three away from the record, and that's Taven Lovin, grown man basketball, overpowering FAU. Forrest now all alone in fourth place in the all-time scoring list at FAU after that three as well. Seven on the shot clock. Spin move inside, drawing the foul. Gets it to go! Count the basket and the foul. What a play there from Janelle Davis. How did Janelle Davis make this shot? Watch the spin, creates more space, but the strength to not lose it and finish with your offhand. I love players that spin into open space for a reason. Man, good PhD from Davis with a proper hand development. He completes the three-point play there. It's a four-point game here in Birmingham. Lovin to the rim, missing. Got a good opportunity there. Now in transition, here's Davis. Davis lost his defender, goes reverse layup, has his shot blocked. Didn't get the call this time. Jelly Walker. Up top, three-point attempt, got it. Ty Brewer from downtown. Brewer with six. On the other end, blocked from behind, out of play, a volleyball spike. 
onto the baseline. FAU ball on the other side. Seven point lead for the Blazers. Well, how good has this game been tonight? A little offense from UAB. Skip, rip a three. Big block on the other end. That's Jemison and Tony. Tony! Jalen here teamed up with Mission Tiger to help. 16 made free throws with 11.56 left to play. 20 consecutive victories here for the FAU Owls. Move their way up to the number 19 spot in the AP poll. It's a school record 20 consecutive victories. And with a win, which would be their 22nd, be the most wins they've ever had in a season in school history. But right now they trail by seven. Jordan Jelly Walker making his comeback after missing the last five. Pulls up, rise and fire, comes up empty. We're going to jump ball here. It's coming back to the outs. Look at the quick huddle by FAU. This is just what they do. Quick huddle, announce what's coming next. They're going to plan their next offensive possession. Those quick huddles don't often happen in modern college basketball where it's all about individual performances and I got to get mine and my points. This is one of the most, if not the most, unselfish team in the country, in my opinion. Dusty May was praising his team for that, and he said that's something that Mike Davis noted about his team. We talked about him meeting with his team and saying, you guys are probably one of the five true teams in college basketball right now, and not like the other 320 or so there are in the country. You guys are connected, and you guys are together. Seven-point lead for the Blazers, looking for more. Gaines is in a great game, gets another bucket there. 14 now for Gaines. And the Blazers starting to pick it back up again offensively. Forrest. This is short. And it's going to be a foul here off of the rebound for UAB. I want you to watch Trey Jemison. He's going to be setting this pick and roll. His last two steps are big, wide, and quick to the screen. That gives plenty of room for Gaines to rip a three inside of the wing. Love that screen assist from Trey Jemison. That's the, that's the difference for, for great screeners, those last two steps. Jemison coming out after picking up his third foul on the loose ball. Baseline out of bounds play and a foul committed. And that's going to send Elijah Martin to the free throw line. Martin was the leading scorer for this FAU team last year. At over 14 points per game. Averaging 12 per game this year, but Martin only four points in the game tonight. Two of them from the foul line, make it three of them from the foul line. He's now got five. I love what Coach Dusty May told me about Elijah Martin. He said he's built like Ray Lewis, but wants to be Damian Lillard. <laughs> it's a great comparison for his game. He's tough as nails. He's got this strong body. But he's shifty enough, and he's got, got games similar to Damian Lillard. And, and, and if I'm Dusty May, and if I'm FAU, the coaching staff, the bench, you're not really worried about your offense. You don't mind if the game's in the 50s and 60s. That, that, that's fine. You're worried about your defense. Already given up almost 60 points with 10 and a half left because of plays like that. Davis the trailer, another good pass. This UAB team has done a really nice job of moving without the basketball tonight. Golden trying to get the backdoor pass to the cutter. Martin, and it's knocked out of play, and it's going to stay with the Owls with 18 on the shot clock. This is called fluidity and spacing. You get that weak side cut. Another really, really good pass by Gaines of staying under control. That's something that he didn't do the first 10 games of the season. He kept trying to make the home run play. Now he's just making the right play. Owls struggling with their shot right now. They've missed their last five. And Golden. Was almost surprised he was so open they didn't know what to do and shuffled his feet in the process. Almost, I would say that's exactly what happened for Golden. He's never been that wide open before. Except for the first play of the second half. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Are you giving me the it's it's not you, it's me routine? Yeah, I think, yeah. Gaines. I tried to dump off that time. It didn't work. Alice had it sniffed. What a pass ahead. Great pass. 
Kong on the rim did not drop, and that prevented Golden from attempting a tip because it sat on the rim. Jelly Walker with a great pass to Tony. Jelly Walker may not be scored right now, but man, does he have court vision. He's got six assists now. Floated up for Golden. He can't finish right underneath the rim. The lead back up to 11 here for the Blazers, and they're looking for more. Jelly Walker pulls up off the mark. Here come the Owls. This is Force. Head to Martin, and he's going to get called for the travel. What do you think? Do you think that was a travel? Absolutely. One too many steps. It was, the, was, it was the extra step. step in the shuffle. Well, you can have a gather step on the catch, but you can't have a second gather step. And Dusty May's talking about it right now. A little bit indecisive. A couple of Ford Atlantic players that we haven't seen. This is true adversity right now. Being down this much in conference play, it has not happened this season in conference play. 11-point lead for UAB as we get a foul away from the basketball. Turnovers have been kept relatively low tonight for both teams. Seven for UAB, six for FAU. When you talk about adversity, something that UAB faced last year. Was able to get through it to get to the tournament. Jelly Walker rattles one home. Another three from Walker. He's got nine. He's just two of ten from the field. All of his shots taken have been from three. Here's Davis. Misses. Walker with a rebound. It's a 7-0 run for the Blazers. Fall away. Got it. Timeout, Owls. Is back. And missed the last five. He was going to be a game time decision tonight. 11 points, six assists. Again, if he had, if he qualified, I mean, you had to play in over 75% of your team's games here on the other end, though. Reverse layup and good. Brandon Weatherspoon quiets the crowd a little bit. That puts an end to a 9 0 run for UAB. Gets the deficit down to 14 for the outs. That's the first time Ford Atlantic really attacked that gap in that 1 3 1 zone. We're getting another offensive foul again on a screen here against UAB. That's four now on Davis. Here's Davis, number zero, coming up to set the screen. Shifts just a little bit late, a tiny little hip check. Actually probably okay if I let that one go. Great ball fake to get a shot attempt up, but a miss there from Gaffney. Bach knock, knocked out of play. He'll stay on the Owls' end of the floor. This is a time for UAB right now where you're up double. You have a double-digit lead, and you feel good about yourself, but you cannot take your foot off the gas pedal because Florida Atlantic has enough firepower to get back into this game, but also can control tempo when they want to. Good Davis. ball fake. Davis. Working hard inside, misses a couple of times. A third tap in there from Davis is good. And the lead is 12 for the Blazers. This is Gaines, he's got 14 points to Buffin. Just kind of picked up the slack in Walker's absence. Gaines was open for three if it would have come off that curl more cleanly and now, ready to shoot. Now they're starting to deny Walker, so Gaines will take the three. That one almost went in. Back come the Owls, quickly, in transition. Work it down low. Rosado. On the block. Rosado back out to Gaffney. Gaffney, inside, nine on the shot clock. Fall away in the lane. Got it to go. That's a tough shot there from Jalen Gaffney, the former UConn Husky. And you could see Dusty May on the sideline imploring his guys, get a stop. Get a stop. Boy, what a college basketball game we've retreated to tonight here in Birmingham. Buffett. 
Tough inside. Followed his shot. Tapped it in. Boy, driving baseline. Dishes it off to Rosado. Tough shot inside. Got it to go. There's not much Jemison could do about that there. Yeah, but with 6-18 left, you can't just trade buckets back and forth. You have to come up with consecutive stops if you're Florida Atlantic. You have to manufacture multiple possessions in a row where you get a clean rebound, get a deflection, or steal. Jelly Walker, right in the shot clock. Boy, he stopped oh, no. on a dime for that one. Oh, no. What'd you say earlier? You can't teach that? Miss on the right wing. Whistle underneath. Foul called. It's going to be against Rosado. And it's going to be UAB basketball. Good for Drew Timmy. Get a chance to watch them tonight. Here on CBS Sports Network, another ranked team on our air. And the number 19 Owls of FAU trailing by 12. Their 20-game win streak in jeopardy right now here in Birmingham. As the Blazers have reestablished themselves after struggling in the early going here in the second half. And we have a foul. More free throws. UAB does this better than just about any team in the country. And that's get to the foul line. They have 20, pardon me, 19 free throw attempts on the game. We have 20 and 21 coming up right here. There's also a psychological aspect to that. You think you play great defense, but the wings and guards for UAB do such a great job of drawing fouls. But psychologically, you, as a defender, you think you're playing great defense, and then the game slows, you're out of rhythm, you feel bad, you feel demoralized because you thought you had a good stop, and then you foul. Gaines has had himself a great game. Now, he came into the game second in Conference USA, and he steals, or pardon me, an assist per game at 4.7. He only has two assists tonight, but he's picked up the slack offensively with 16 for them. The lead is 14 for the Blazers. UAB needs points. Golden. Too strong. Fell out of the rim. Looked like it was in, but fell out. Now FAU desperately needs a stop. Gaines. Work inside on Golden. Golden was backpedaling the whole way. And commits the foul. Again, UAB's got free throws. Again, it's demoralizing. I didn't like that call, but this game has been called evenly throughout the, throughout the entire, entire course of this contest. Gains 5 of 8 from the field. He's 5 of 5 from the free throw line tonight. Gains a 77% free throw shooter entering the game as he connects there. He's got 17. So let's take a look at what they've done scoring tonight. The Blazers, 17 for Gaines, 13 for Jordan Jelly Walker. Make it 18 now for Gaines. We wondered if Jordan Walker was going to play, and he did. What would this offense look like? What would the defense look like? Would they look like the same team or the team that's that we've seen for the last four or five games? Boyd with a little runner in the lane puts an end to a 6-0 run by the Blazers. It's been pretty balanced scoring for UAB, though. I thought the ball didn't stick on the offensive end. There was good spacing, driving and kicking. They got to the free throw line as much as they wanted. One of the things the Owls aren't doing tonight, and that's making threes. Something they do very well is that's tapped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Blazers. FAU just 4 of 23. That's 17% from downtown. This is a team that averages 10 made threes per game. That's 14th best in the country. That leads Conference USA. They're the 42nd best three-point shooting teams percentage-wise in the country. Again, shooting just 17% from downtown tonight. This is the time right now with four minutes left. You, you got to crank up the pressure a little bit if you're FAU. You have to. 
Gaines, off balance shot, offensive rebound. UAB just wants it more right now. Yeah, quite. That's nine points for Lovin, who's been really good inside the paint. Then on the other end, a miss from Martin, up ahead to Gaines, and now they're just taking some time. FAU has never won here at Bartow. And UAB's ability to slow it down, play with tempo and pace, and score without Jordan Walker. Davis with the steal in transition, finds some room inside, misses the layup foul. Fans thought they bailed him out. UAB looking to knock out the 19th ranked Owls. Stay with us. We give thanks to the athletes who took big risks, who beat the odds despite being our balls because of their skin. Frick game show against Ford Atlantic tonight. And he really set the tone early for this UAB team in terms of their offense. Remember early in the game, it was kind of Gaines versus Boyd about the first six, seven, eight minutes of the game. And then Gaines has really kind of kept that going through both halves. He's starting to play exactly how Coach Andy Kennedy wants him to play. He doesn't have to make the home run play all the time. He just has to make the right play. And tonight, there are very few times in which I could say that Eric Gaines was out of control or wasn't locked in mentally and making the right play offensively. There's a steal here. Three-point shot in the corner, in and out. And again, the three-point shot's just not Ooh, falling. I don't like that call at all. This is probably going to get overturned here. Fans thought it should be UAB ball. It does indeed get overturned. Take one more look. That was F That's a really a definition of FAU's nights. Get a great steal. Ball goes halfway down the rim. Rims out. Hard to trap Jordan Walker. FAU just four of 24 from three. There's another steal. Owls trying to make things happen defensively, catching UAB napping a bit. But they got to convert it into points as Davis loses it out of bounds with three minutes to go. One of the other things I want to talk about here and that I've noticed, FAU, a very good rebounding team in terms of rebounding margin. They're a plus six and a half, plus 6.8. Tonight, they're being out-rebounded by 10. And Coach Dusty May told us. He said, look, that's one of the things we're worried about the most, their size, their physicality. And their patience around the rim. It's it's going to be. And then we got an offensive foul here. That's three straight turnovers for UAB. The bad news for FAU is they haven't been able to convert off of anything yet. Here's Eric Gaines. Extends that left arm just enough. That's a good call. That's the right call. And that is the fourth foul on Eric Gaines. 247 left. You're constantly thinking about the three-point shot if you're FAU. Gaines will stay in. Jordan Jelly Walker being replaced at the moment. FAU trailing by 14. Daphne out to Davis. Five on the shot clock. Thought about it. Now takes it. Got it! Janelle Davis, boy, he needed that, didn't he? He was just 3 of 16 from the field before that make. He dribbled right into a corner. That is four straight turnovers for UAB. The press for FAU has really bothered the Blazers here. I mean, this is... We're going to be in here a couple possession game here if FAU knocks down a bucket. That's five turnovers in the last... 95 seconds for the Blazers. As the Owls running out of possessions, though. So they trail it by 11. Boyd for three. Got Here another go. one. Here we go. Nick Boyd from downtown. That's his fourth made three of the game. And we're getting a foul here on the sideline. That's an 8 nothing run here for FAU. They trail only by 8 with 2.02 to play. 
and they faked the pin down to go to a DHO, and that's Boyd, who's had himself a really solid game, 15 points. That's his third three to go along with seven rebounds and three assists. Nicholas Boyd has been the guy for the Owls. So games will go to the line. You can get to 20 points here. now a perfect night at the free throw line for games he's eight for eight UAB 21 of 24 from the free throw line tonight Would be surprised if, if, if UAB goes to their one through one zone they're in it right now UAB perfect from the foul line here in the second half less than two minutes to play Here's Davis for three. Got another one. Davis from downtown. Timeout taken. FAU. It's a seven-point game here in Birmingham. A minute 49 to go. Stick around. Remember, Kyle. No foul mode yet. Continue with your pressure defense, and you have to play without fouling right now. UAB is locked in on the free throw line. The Blazers are 22 for 25 from the free throw line. You know, we talked about how the FAU Owls have been struggling from three-point range. They only had four three-pointers in the first 37 minutes of play. They have three in the last 51 seconds. Breaking the pass here, Buffett throwing it up and throwing it down. Trey Jemison says, I don't care about your 20-game win streak. Then on the other side, in the corner, shot missed. Ball loose in the paint, second effort, and we're gonna get a foul here in free throws, and it looks like Forrest went down pretty hard. Well, this is one way to break the press. You pass ahead and buff and throws it down to Jemison with the thunderous slam. Oh my! Jemison with eight points in the game. By the way, the last foul on Buffett is third. Now free throws here for Forrest. Misses on the first attempt. And with 128 left, regardless of a make or miss here for Michael Forrest, you're thinking denial as much as you can for FAU. The full court press. You have to deny, switch everything, trying to get a steal. Deflection. Eight-point game pressure here from FAU as they work to get it in. A foul committed almost immediately. It's going to send gains to the free throw line. A little early for that, isn't it? He, Boyd was not trying to do that. He was just trying to play aggressive, which he was. But it happens in these pressure situations. You know, you tell yourself, I got to play hard. I can't foul. And what happens? You foul. Play sound while playing aggressive. So Gaines back to the free throw line here. FAU outscoring UAB by five here in this second half. But remember, they were down 13 at the end of the first. Gaines a perfect 10 of 10. From the free throw line tonight, he's got 21 points. And we talked about it. This is a team that goes to the free throw line a ton. That was their 27th free throw attempt. They have 23 makes. Minute 23 to go. Davis misses. Ball tapped out. Davis is going to come up with it. Now a right corner for three. That's off the side of the backboard. The OAB's got it. Long lead pass ahead. Tony, well, now Tony. you're in foul, ter foul territory. Foul committed there by Boyd. And that's going to send Tony Tony to the free throw line. Boyd's got four now. It's been that kind of night from the perimeter for Florida Atlantic. Seven of 31 from three. Hard to win on the road when you only shoot 22% from the three-point line. 
it's not like they turn the ball over a lot. They only had six turnovers. They had 13 assists tonight. It was UAB's offense that was just almost impossible to slow down. They got to the free throw line a ton. 24 of 28 from the free throw line. Incredible. One more here for Tony. Tony, a 68% free throw shooter. Got them both to go. And FAU with a 20-game win streak, the longest in school history. The longest active one in the country is about to go inactive. Unless something drastic changes here. As we get another miss there from Boyd. UAB has won every matchup against FAU here in this building. 6-0 all-time at Bartow Arena. They lead the all-time series 12-4. And the Owls were thinking this might be the night that that 6-0 record against them would come to an end. And you get a foul here called against Michael Forrest. And standing ovation. And here's the huddle again with the Owls. Now, I want to talk big picture with you, Mike. And, and look, this game's an 11-point game with more free throws coming up for the Blazers. Looks like this loss could potentially happen. FAU's 20-game win streak coming to an end. Is there a sense? I know people have talked about this in the pro ranks, about teams with long win streaks, about taking a loss at some point so you don't have that streak hanging over your head going into the conference tournament. Because this is a team that can do some things in FAU come March. There, there's no question, but I, I always get hesitant when I hear people talk about that. I'd much rather learn after a win than after a loss. I, I, certainly, there's going to be opportunities for Coach Dustin May to look at the film, talk to his guys. I actually wouldn't be surprised if they looked at the film and said, guys, it, it, it's okay. Here's where we have to get better. And I think that attitude is the right attitude to have to say, guys, we, we didn't play our best. Here's what we need to do. It's not the end of the world. Our net ranking still top 20 in the country. We're still going to be, you know, they're not even going to talk about being ranked or any of that. It's how do we get better from this? They're not going to foul now, and everyone's on their feet here at Bartow. FAU would be an at-large team in the NCAA tournament if the season ended today. Gaines launches, misses the three. With 10 seconds to go, the Owls will see their 20-game win streak, a remarkable streak, come to an end here in Birmingham as the Blazers will run out the clock. They are 7-0 all-time against FAU here in this building in the 19th-ranked team.